Welcome to the Q&A session for the dentistry degree at the University Universidad Teu Cardenal Herrera. Uh, we're going to answer a few questions today that have been sent in by some of you. And the first question comes in from Benua Radia. She doesn't give uh, or she doesn't give a home country or home address. But the question is, what does the university offer in this degree that other universities don't? It's a good question, Benua. And uh, well, I wanted to take this opportunity to highlight some of the key features and the key facts about our university, which include uh, highly integrated practicals, which means that you, in one practical session, you could be uh, experiencing patients from a variety, uh, with a variety of disorders and a variety of pathologies. So you can get a broader, more natural experience in the clinic. A uh, very personalized uh, learning environment, lots of care taken by the professionals, by the by the professors. Uh, State-of-the-art facilities, we use the best equipment and our equipment is always uh, maintained to the highest standard and it's updated as new and uh, improved uh, equipment uh, is produced. A multicultural learning environment, you will be within uh, a mix of very rich mix of uh, students from many different parts of the world. We have at least 60 nationalities represented on campus and quite a few of those also represented within the uh, dentistry degree. And uh, I just wanted to finish by saying you'll find that our university and specifically the dentistry degree offers a genuine supportive uh, environment where we are willing and wishing uh, success for the students and we really do our best from the side of the from the side of the faculty and the professors in order to facilitate the success for the students so um, I hope that answers your question Benua right uh, I'd like to move on to the next question uh, from, uh, from Ahmed Amin who writes to us from Egypt and uh, asks about the IGCSE requirements well, um, thanks for the question, Ahmed. Uh, in reality, uh, the IGCSE requirements are much the same as you would expect for any health science uh, degree. We expect you to I hopefully, ideally, have uh, biology, chemistry, mathematics, anything along those lines. However, we do have flexibility. Um, if there is one subject which I would say is sort of uh, stands out above the rest, it would be biology. So please do make sure that uh, if you are, if you do have a choice, do take biology at uh, at IGCSE level. Um, so that's the IGCSE requirements. So I hope that was that was clear enough. Uh, following question from James Hughes in London. Hi, James. Uh, he asks, what vaccines do dentistry students require before the start of university? Um, well, we strongly recommend here because vaccination is uh, voluntary, um, it is difficult to mandate the vaccination. However, uh, in line with European safety procedures and European safety protocols, we do recommend strongly that uh, for their own safety and for the safety of the patients, students do get the hepatitis B vaccination. Remember, hepatitis B has a booster uh, as well, so make sure you have the vaccination plus the booster, or at least have the first vaccination so you can then come here and have the booster a bit later on. But hepatitis B is the key vaccination that I would really recommend. Um, James Hughes writes again with another question. Um, thanks, James. You're really interested in the, in the degree. And uh, the question is, do university students need to purchase their own equipment, such as handpieces and drills, if so, when would this be necessary and how much would, the, would it cost approximately? Good question, uh, James. That's a brilliant question. And uh, I just wanted to start by saying that this is a private university and uh, our protocol or our method in teaching is as much as possible to let students use their own equipment so that they do get used to it throughout the course of the degree and when they graduate essentially they've been they graduate with a toolkit of equipment that they have been using throughout the whole degree we find that this method or this protocol um, is far superior because the student builds up the kit as they go through uh, I mean, the cost of the, 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 the tools and the handpieces and the drills, you would have to pay for them anyway, whether it's at the end of the degree, if you come from a state institution where you get all the tools during the degree, you're going to have to put the investment in at the end anyway. Uh, or in our case, during the course of the degree, the cost is broken down and the student finds it much easier to pay for the for the equipment, especially students who are paying for the degree by themselves. And also, more importantly, you... When you graduate, you've been working with your equipment for the last five years. So it's equipment that you are familiar with and you, you already know how it works. 
Um, and so, yes, you do need to purchase the equipment. We inform you and we help you with the choice of the equipment and the choice of the pieces as you go through the degree. Uh, you are informed and helped by the professors as to the to, to which ones to choose. How much would this cost approximately? Well, it depends on what the students want to spend, of course. Um, the professors will help them and suggest a, the pieces uh, from the most economical to the most expensive. However, if you want a numerical estimate, I would say you could spend anywhere between 6000 and 15000 depending on the quality, the cost, and the pieces that you buy. Some students go for the minimum kit, some students buy the whole set, which of course would cost more. So between six and 15,000, you should expect to spend additionally during the degree. The next question comes to us from Cecilia Hertzberg in Finland. Hello, Cecilia. And she asks, how do I apply to study at Theo? And what qualifications do I need to enter for a dentistry degree? Now this question, the second part of the question is very similar to Ahmed's uh, question earlier. Really the qualifications, I mean we're looking for someone with a biological background, a biology or chemistry or physics background. Um, in terms of actual scores, grade scores, um, we recommend or we would like to receive applications from students who are who have scored better than 66% of the maximum available grade at their host institution, at their college. And that is to say, so you should have an average grade of more than 66% to be able to apply here successfully. This is where usually the cutoff occurs in, in, at this university. And so how do you apply? I really recommend you go through to the website www.uchceu.es and follow the links from uh, from that page to uh, to the application process it says new student click on the link how to apply and there's a beautiful infographic there which will take you step by step through the whole process of, uh, of application so I hope I answered that question uh, effectively Cecilia um, you need to be an average of six, 66 out of 100 uh, or better and you can follow the application process through the website finally uh, we have a question from Jennifer in the USA hello Jennifer um, the question is the following. Have gr any graduates successfully practiced in the U.S. Uh, with their degree and license from uh, Uthaja Theo? For international or foreign students, where do they usually practice after they graduate? Two good questions. Uh, the first question I can answer very easily. Have any graduates successfully practiced in the U.S. following graduation here? Uh, the answer is no. However, we have had some American students and they've ended up working in Europe. Um, so maybe that is a, that gives you something to think about. However, we are informed about the, the process by which American students can go back to the States and work. And it usually involves an adaptation course of about a year where the degree is adapted to, to working in the United States and you need to sit the board exams. And it's usually uh, not a problem. And so you have the degree here, you go back, an adaptation course of a year, plus sitting, sitting the board exams, and usually you're good to go. Um, for international and foreign students, where do they usually practice after they graduate? Well, we have a, the, we have a large number of European students who, of course, go back to, to Europe to practice. We have Italian students who t generally tend to go back to Italy, Greek students back to Greece, uh, German, German students back to Germany, etc. Um, for the other international students from Canada, you, they usually go back to their country, for example. Um, and we have a large contingent of Asian students also who tend to go back uh, to their country, sit the board exams, and they've had no problem in practicing. And so from the last few years uh, of, st of graduating students, the majority of them have gone back to their home countries and have been able to modify and adapt their degree to their home country uh, with no problem. As you know, our degree is valid throughout Europe, so you could effectively take the degree from here and work anywhere in Europe with no further uh, adaptation process necessary. So um, I hope uh, this Q&A session has been uh, effective and useful for you. Please keep the questions coming and uh, if necessary we'll uh, look forward to another Q&A session in the future. Thank you very much.